It's been a while since I've seen a PG movie, and I've never reviewed one. So what's my take on Coraline? Awesome film. You know what? The best part was that it was very much like The Nightmare Before Christmas. New, unique, great, and a long-awaited departure from the ordinary. The visuals are just stunning. Though, I wonder if Henry Selleck was a big Twilight Princess fan. Ah, uh, you'll get it if you see it. But, it's just great. It has a light and well-done musical score that has the tact to keep your eyes focused on the movie and not your ears. And, it finishes with a nearly seamless cast of voice actors that truly bring life to the lifeless. Before I go on, I want to talk about Coraline's director, Henry Selleck. He was the director of The Nightmare Before Christmas, James and the Giant Peach, and Monkey Bone. I can't say I loved Monkey Bone all that much, but I did enjoy James and the Giant Peach and absolutely loved The Nightmare Before Christmas. But often people think Tim Burton when you mention The Nightmare Before Christmas. Everyone knows Tim Burton, and I enjoy his work as much as the next person, but Coraline is Henry Selleck's work. He didn't write the story, that was done by Neil Gaiman in the Coraline Horror novella, but he did a great job of taking it from paper to screen. You know, so just keep an eye out for Henry Selleck in the future. I'm sure his works are going to be good. I know I'll be looking out for him. Alright, enough of that. Let's get into the movie. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I do that, the 3D. I almost forgot to mention the 3D. I know 3D isn't anything new, but it's been... Well, I don't think I've ever seen a 3D movie in theaters. Either way, it is a heightened experience, and the 3D glasses you get don't make you want to throw up or give you a headache over the course of the film. It does enhance a lot of the scenes with a few moments meant to be seen in 3D, but is it worth the extra 250? Not if you're light in the pockets like me, but I didn't have a choice. If you can see this movie without having to pay extra for 3D, go for it. If not, well, it's all the same, but the glasses just add to the film. Not worth it, but if you can afford it, you'll probably appreciate the added effect, and you'll know where that extra money went. Okay, okay, now back to the movie. Coraline's star is, of course, Coraline Jones, voiced by Dakota Fanning. Coraline has moved away from her school, home, and friends to the Pink Palace, a house rented out to the Coraline's Dole's Dirt parents, the dueling Miss Forcible and Miss Spink, and the eccentric Miss Robinski and his troop of trained mice, with Weeby Lovett and the cat who live with Weeby's grandma. Oregon seems to only produce crazy people. I can't argue with that, and apparently if you live in Ashland, you're super crazy. With Coraline's parents so caught up in their gardening magazine, not having any close friends, the odd people living at the Pink Palace and the constant rain, Coraline has become more and more separated from her home and the people around her. Until one day she finds a key to a small door, a door hidden behind wallpaper, a door that's bricked up, but opens that very same night. Led by a white mouse, Coraline goes down the rabbit hole and into the other world. A world where she has caring and loving parents, a mute weeby to be her best friend, interesting and exciting people living at the Pink Palace, and no rain to ruin her day. It's a world meant to make Coraline happy, cater just to Coraline, and as her life at home continues to stay the same, she becomes more and more engrossed in the other world with her other mother and other father. And simply staying there forever would work, if not for one little condition. She has to have buttons for eyes and be the loving daughter to a witch. I haven't spoiled anything that wasn't spoiled by the trailers, but I would have liked to know that that twist was going to be the turning point in our little movie. You know, that's the problem I have with trailers these days, is they keep giving away too much. They really need to tell you the whole story to get you to come and see the movie. Uh, I'm going to get ranting in a second. You know, I'll forget that. But that aside, Coraline is a great flick and really one that deserves your attention. If you liked The Nightmare Before Christmas, then you should see it. If you're tired of the pee-pee, poo-poo, caca, and fart and burp jokes most kid movies deliver and want something new, then you should see it. If you just want to see something new and enchanting, then you should see this movie. Why shouldn't you see it? Well, I really can't think of a good reason why you shouldn't see it, but I'll just say this. It's not your typical PG movie. It's a departure from the standard. The overall art style is meant to be creepy especially at the turning part where everything takes a much darker and dire tone. I could see some young children getting one or two nightmares, but it's nothing terrible and really shouldn't be a deterrent from you or your family seeing a good movie. I guess if I'm going to mention that, I may as well mention the scene in the other world where the other Miss Forceful and the other Miss Spink. During their performance, Spink comes up barely clothed and has... Well, she's rather well endowed in the chest and what covers it leaves little to the imagination. Or was that misforceable? I don't know. Odds are your kid would just laugh at it. The kids who are watching it when I saw it sure did. 
but if you want to screen the movie before you take your family, keep your eyes out for this scene. So, my closing thoughts on Coraline. Go see it. It's better than Corpse Bride, more immersive than The Nightmare Before Christmas, and in my opinion, just better than a lot of movies that have come out over these past years. I give Coraline 8.5 other movies out of 10.